morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements in my practice where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we're here every day on the bright side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, let us help you change your life today. Let us help you change the lives of loved ones, friends, family members, workmates today. You can reverse any health challenge if you just know a couple of things. You just have a couple of, just a couple of strategies. It's really not that difficult to reverse chronic degenerative disease. We talk about it every day on the bright side. If you have questions, 844-236-6010 about how we can help you, we want to hear from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have, uh, if you want to purchase any of the longevity products or if you want to uh, sign up to join the Brightside Ben team, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can also call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in purchasing any of our truth treatment products, head to truthtreatments.com. Check out our retinol 5% gel, true serum, truth balm, truth omega-6 healing cream. I formulated them to be healing products. You know, when you think about it, anti-aging is healing. If you can't take your wrinkle cream, your favorite wrinkle cream, and put it on a cut or a scrape and accelerate the healing of that cut or scrape with your wrinkle cream, your wrinkle cream's not working. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I don't know if my anti-aging product's working or not. Well, here's how you tell. Put it on something that needs healing and see how fast it accelerates the healing. If it accelerates the healing dramatically, you got an anti-aging product. If it accelerates the healing a little bit, maybe not, probably not. It could have something to do with just the moisture, or it could be just just a coincidence, just the timing of the healing process, which was going to kick in anyway. But if you got dramatic healing from your anti-aging product, then you know you got a good anti-aging product. And folks, that's exactly what you're going to get with our Truth Serum pro our Truth Treatment products, including Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Retinol 5% Gel. You can find that all about it at truthtreatments.com. I also have a skin health blog up at truthtreatments.com. Also on my Facebook page, The Truth With Ben. Okay. 844-236-6010 is our number. Try to call in early if you have questions so we don't have to we don't have to leave uh, we don't have to leave anybody hanging at the end of the program. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking about the commonality behind the common factors behind chronic degenerative diseases and how you gotta make distinctions. This is so important, the idea of making distinctions. In the body, in the skin, for example, we look at the skin, we don't make distinctions, so we just smear stuff on the surface of the skin. But if we're making distinctions, we would see the skin has layers. We would see the skin has moisture factors built into it. We would see that the skin is made of cells. We would see that there are areas that we could work with our skincare products to get the results that we want. This comes from making distinctions. When it comes to keeping the body healthy, if we saw that the body is made up of cells and then stuff coming out of the cells, this would give us control. This would give us power over how we handle our body. We would know that we would need to somehow nutriate or support the health of the cell so we could have better stuff. But we got to make the distinction between cells and stuff. Most of us, if we're sick, we just think about the organ that's sick. We don't think about the cells. We don't think about the stuff coming out of the cells. Another thing that happens if we make the distinction between cells and stuff or between cells and organs, 
and this is this is really important is we'll know that our problem is not at the organ level. Nobody has Alzheimer's disease. We got brain cell disease. Nobody has heart disease, uh, uh, cardiovascular disease. We got heart cell disease. Nobody has liver disease. We got hepatocyte, liver cell disease. Nobody has uh, irritable bowel syndrome. We have enterocyte, intestinal cell problems. We have to treat the cell. And the good news is the cell only needs a few basic things. Now, another very simple thread that runs underneath or as diseases is inflammation. Inflammation is the body's iconic protective response. Inflammation is Latin for setting a fire. And the body uses a wall of fire. Technically, that's what's happening. A wall of fire from a, from a I should say metaphorically, that's what's happening. A wall of fire is being built around a wound or built around some area that needs to be quarantined or a built around some area that needs to be protected and supported. That fire is what we call inflammation. So inflammation, it sounds like, would be a problem, but it's not. Yes, it's true that behind or as, not behind, as all disease, you have inflammation. Inflammation is almost synonymous with disease. Not quite because there's a few other things happening, but it's a big part of it. Does that mean, though, that if we're dealing with a health challenge, we need to be suppressing inflammation? We need to be taking anti-inflammatories, anti-inflammatory drugs or anti-inflammatory herbs or anti-inflammatory nutrients? Or Does that mean the fact that inflammation is behind all health challenges or inflammation is all health challenges that we've got to somehow shut down inflammation no absolutely 100 percent not yesterday we said inflammation is the body's equivalent of the of your car's air safety bag if you keep getting into a fender bender if we if we keep hitting the curb or hitting a fire hydrant or hitting other cars and our airbag keeps deploying would the intelligent solution be to have our airbag deactivated? Well, no, that's a doctor solution. That's the medical model solution, deactivating the airbags. But common sense tells you that's silly. Unless you're, unless you're sell, uh, somehow uh, uh, selling uh, car parts and you're making money from the car parts, why would you take your airbag out? Fix your driving. Drive better. If you got inflammation in the body, you don't suppress inflammation, eat better. <coughs> Excuse me. Live better. If we have a fever, does that mean we automatically have to take an anti-inflammatory or, or the symptoms of a cold? Fever sometimes comes from inflammation. If we have the symptoms of a cold, the inflammatory symptoms of a cold, does that mean we've got to run and go get Tylenol and aspirin? By the way, if you're taking Tylenol for the flu, you might want to reconsider. Last month, researchers uh, from Aust uh, New Zealand or Australia, I forget which one, New Zealand or Australia, announced that uh, a, C a Tylenol, acetaminophen, compared to a salt pill or sugar pill, does not reduce fever and has no effect on your flu. And, of course, you're also going to be exposing yourself to medication, which Tylenol is relatively benign. But still, you know, do you know, acetaminophen poisoning, acetaminophen is the chemical name for Tylenol. I'm not sure if I could keep saying Tylenol. I don't want to get sued by Tylenol. In the pharmacy business, we abbreviate acetaminophen APAP. APAP. So if you ever seen that on your on your chart, APAP, -A -P, that's acetaminophen. Anyway, acetaminophen, APAP, Tylenol. That's a lead, that's one of the ways that that's a cause of death. Overdose anyway on Tylenol is one of the significant causes of death. It's a poison. It needs to be detoxified. There are, you know, do you know that there are 50 million chemicals out there, according to the Chemical Abstract Service? That's an agency that registers new chemicals as they're invented or, or as they're discovered. 50 million. We're interacting with 50 million chemicals. And some of them, a lot, uh, probably 100,000 of them are used commonly. And none of these chemicals existed a mere 200 years ago. The human body evolves over the course of millennia. 200 years is nothing. Our body has had to figure out how to somehow deal with 50 million new chemical entities. And you know what? The cool thing is it's done it for the most part successfully. That's a miracle. That's one of the class. That's one of the classic miracles of human bio of, of all biochemistry. I'm pharmacist Ben. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, 
Monday, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time in the a.m. In the morning, we got uh, our programs are all up uh, archived. Five years going on. Five years now I've been doing this program, I believe. Yeah, it'll be five years in March. Five years of programs at uh, ben, uh, BenFuchsArchives.com and also PharmacistBen.com. And you can purchase Longevity products off the website as well. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. And you and I can help change the world. We can help. And I'm not being, uh, that's not hyperbolic. That's not exaggerating, folks. When we change the world's health, we'll change the world. And that really, that's how important this, me- this mission is. And that's what we talk about here every day on the Bright Side. The good news about how easy it is to reverse chronic degenerative disease. Before we went to break, I was saying how we, by the way, our number 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. Before we went to break, I was saying how there's 50 million chemicals out there. And they didn't exist 200 years ago. Yet the human body, the bio, the detoxification system in the body has figured out how to detoxify all of them. We can detoxify every single chemical. The problem is that there's so many of them and we're interacting with with such tonnage, tons of the stuff. That's the problem. It's overwhelm. It's not the fact, it's not that we can't handle dioxin. It's not that uh, we can't handle pesticides or nerve gas or prescription drugs. We can handle it fine. That's a miracle, folks. These things didn't exist 200 years ago, yet the body, because of its amazing ability to adjust and evolve and change and get better and bigger, and stronger, has figured out how to handle all of these 50 million chemicals. To the cells of the body, there's two kinds of chemicals, only two. There's the kind that it can use, and there's the kind that it can't use. There's a kind it can use for chemistry, and by the way, when I say to the body, I mean to the cells of the body. Remember, we got to make this distinction. The cells of the body can either use a chemical or they can't use a chemical. The ones that can be used, we call those nutrition. We call those nutrients. Right? There's not a lot of them. There's about 90 or so of them. The ones it can't use, there's 50 million of them. The ones it can't use are the ones we call poisons. And that's why I call drugs poisons, because cells can't use drugs. Let me say that again. Cells cannot use drugs. Take that to your doctor. Cells cannot use drugs. They can only use nutrients. Anything a cell cannot use is, by definition, a poison. By definition. Whether we're talking plutonium, or whether we're talking pesticides, or whether we're talking Plavix, or your pharmaceuticals, or nerve gas, or sunscreens, by the way. Sunscreens are poisons in that regard, too. Most of the, most of the crapola we put on our skin in uh, our skincare products qualifies as a poison because cells can't use it. You think your cells using silicon? No. You think your cells using vegetable oil? No. You think your cells using preservatives or fragrances or, or waxes or, you know, the water, whatever's in your skincare product? No, no, and no. There's only two things a cell can use, and this is why I formulated my truth treatment products, by the way. There's only two things a cell can use, vitamin C and vitamin A. And some people will tell you peptides, but I have my doubts. We can throw those in. Let's throw in peptides. Peptides, vitamin A, and vitamin C, but certainly vitamin A and vitamin C. Everything else is considered by definition, because a cell can't use it, a poison. And the body's response to poison is protection. It's, number one, it's protection. Number two, it's detoxification. Protection is what we call inflammation. Inflammation is a protective response, and it's one of the most miraculous processes in all of biology. Every time we're inflamed, we should get on our knees and praise the Lord, because it is an absolute miracle how the body protects itself through this inflammatory process. Again, the problem isn't the inflammation. It's the fact that it's always being activated. The problem isn't the airbag. The fact is that it's always kicking in. It's always exploding. So you don't take out the airbag. You don't suppress inflammation. You drive better and you eat better. The detox system, by the way, runs on nutrition. The detox system is made up of cells, liver cells. Your liver cells are technically called hepato. Hepato always means liver, like hepatitis. Hep. When you hear hep, you're talking about the liver. Hepatocyte, site means cell. A hepatocyte is a liver cell. A liver cell has this mind-blowing, I mean, absolutely staggering, slack-jawed amazement 
just crazy, ridiculous ability to detoxify things. But it uses nutrition to do it. It uses vitamin C to do it. It uses the Mighty 90 to do it, which is why, in my opinion, the best way to detox is to get on your Mighty 90. Well, the best way to detox is, is not to expose yourself in the first place, to eliminate exposure. But after that, the best way to detox is your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients. Support the health of the liver cells. I don't, I'm not a big believer in these l detox formulas. You know, why? Detox formulas are usually herbs. Not that I have a problem with herbs, but they're medicine. Why would you give your body some me more medicine to deal, to deal with? And again, herbs are medicine, right? But there's no cell that's using anything in an herb with some exceptions, some major, some, uh, uh, some uh, exceptions for nutrients that are found in herbs, like vitamins or perhaps uh, uh, flavonoids or carotenes. Flavonoids and carotenes, they're kind of like nutrients in a way. They're not essential, perhaps, but they're nutrients. Other than that, an herb has to be detoxified. Other than that, an herb's a medicine. So we use this word inflammation, we throw it around a lot, but we don't talk about it for what it really is. It's a protective response. It's marked by four phenomena. If you go to medical school, they'll tell you dolor, calor, rubor, tumor. Those are the four hallmark signs of inflammation. Dolor for pain, calor for heat, rubor for redness, tumor for swelling. Dolor, calor, rubor, tumor, pain, heat, redness and swelling. Those are the signs of inflammation. But here's where it becomes a problem. See, dolor, calor, rubor, tumor, pain, heat, redness, and swelling are obvious when we get a black eye or when we break our leg or we sprain our ankle. Those are obvious. You can see the swelling. You can see the redness. You can feel the pain. You can feel the heat sense the heat. But the kind of inflammation that causes our diseases is not the kind of inflammation that causes a black eye. And this is so important. It's another distinction. So you got your cell distinction, cells versus organs. You got your uh, inflammatory distinction, inflammation versus, versus disease or versus anti-inflammation. And then and then you have a very important distinction that nobody talks about. Macroinflammation versus microinflammation. When was the last time you heard anybody talk about that? You can't even Google it. You can't even do research on it. It's not even there. Macroinflammation and microinflammation. Macroinflammation is the kind of inflammation doctors know about. Dolor, collar, rubor, tumor. Macroinflammation is a black eye. Macroinflammation is pain and it's heat and it's redness and it's swelling. But microinflammation is invisible. You don't know it's there until it's too late because it happens at the microscopic level of a cell. One cell. One little tiny dinky cell that's one one hundredth the size of a head of a pin is where these inflammatory diseases begin. And then that happens with two cells. And then three and then four and then five. And because cells are so, so tiny we don't see it. We don't know it. We don't sense it until it's too late. But if you understand the logic then you understand that all we got to do is eliminate the inflammation by eliminating the cause of the inflammatory response. It's a protective response. It's a defensive response. So figuring out what that offending agent is, that's the key. Figuring out the offending agent to any kind of inflammatory health issue, which is all chronic degenerative health issues. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with you and your phone calls, 844-236-6. No. We are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, the longevity business, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you have questions about the truth, about my true skin health products, just got a letter, by the way, just got a, a, a text. Hi, Ben. I just wanted to let you know I placed an order for the serum and balm last night. My plan is to get the other two uh, in the next month or so. I have to tell you that for the first time in years, my face is starting to feel like skin and not red, burning sandpaper. I was actually smiling yesterday without pain. This is a gal, Dawn, who's got some severe eczema on her skin. She finishes anyway. Thanks for this awesome skincare line. I'm so grateful to be smiling again. It's not me. It's not the truth. It's you. It's your skin. It's your skin cells. Your skin cells respond when they're fed, when they're nourished, like the rest of the body responds, like the rest of the cells of the body respond when it's fed and when it's nourished. And understanding this distinction between the cells and the organs is one of the keys to understanding how powerful the mighty 90 essential nutrients are. 
If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs or the Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, 844-236-6010 is our number. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about the inflammatory process. And I do want to get to uh, Alzheimer's disease and dementias in the uh, inflammatory process. More about vitamin E and more about the fatty hormones, which we're still talking about, believe it or not. I haven't told you about pregnenolone. Love that stuff. We'll be talking about that in the coming days on the Bright Side. Okay, let's go to... Dude, let's go to Gwendolyn in St. Louis, Missouri. What's up, Gwendol- Gwendolyn? Is that right? Yes. What's going um, on, Gwendolyn? How are you doing? Hi. Thank you for taking the call. I really admire what you're doing and thankful for your, thank your you. mission. Oh, oh thank you. Um, Praise God. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I pray for you, and I thank the Father for you, Dr. Joel Wallach and Gwen Olson and all of the things that you guys are doing. Damn, thank um, you. Gwendolyn, are you a longevity? You're a new person to longevity, or have you been around? New. Yes, new. new. Yeah, trying to How new is new? Uh, let's say about four months, maybe. Very nice. And how did you get introduced? And I'll, I'll get your question here next, but I just want to know how you got introduced. Sure. To... sure. Um, my friend told me about it. She also sells it and takes it. She's always into this health situations and trying to get the world healed. Oh, I love so, it. I love it. We're a bun- There's a bunch yeah. of us, Gwendolyn. Have you noticed? Like, we're a family, the Longevity family. We're yeah. all dedicated to this. And I'm Good. loving this moment. I'm loving oh, this moment. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. So what's going on? How can I help you today? All right, got a series of stuff trying to figure out how to do this thing right. So, um, reflux, acid reflux, but. I wrote out all the names of the medicine and I No, no, no. Them. Just give me the bullet points. Acid reflux is oh. one. Okay, um uh, they gave me um nervous leg syndrome, uh, medicine for that. Acid nervous what? Reflux. Nervous leg? Yeah. Okay, nervous. nervous leg, restless leg syndrome and uh yeah. and uh, uh acid reflux. And acid reflux, yeah. What was the other one? Or what's the next one? Um Pre-hypertension. Okay. And, uh, Pre-hypertension. Yeah, allergy shots. Allergy shots. Okay, listen, we're going to take care of everything in one fell swoop, all right? Now, I can give you all the mechanisms behind it all, but it's all related to the same basic thing. Acid reflux, restless leg syndrome, um, you know, I, I remember with the other, uh, pre-hypertension, what was the fourth thing that you said before hypertension? Oh, uh, nerve, they give me shots. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, okay, well, anyway, here's the deal. You got a digestive problem, Gwendolyn, and you sound like a smart woman and you sound like you've been around the block a couple of times i'm guessing you're in your 30s or 40s correct um more closer to 50 closer to 50 fine so you know you have digestive issues you know it okay cramping blow i'm not psychic gwendolyn i'm telling you this is how it works heartburn right. is a sign down, of what's that when she lay when i lay down my food come back up all of it here's the thing your body's rebelling your body is fighting you it's saying don't put that in me anymore and now it's broke now it's gotten worse because now you're not absorbing nutrients that's what the restless leg syndrome is and uh, now you're not handling sugar correctly and that's what the hypertension is and there's no pre-hypertension your, your blood pressure is messed up so here's what you got to do number one start working on your gut on the digestive system that's job number one Gwendolyn I can tell you a lot of other things but until you do this you're not going to get maximum benefit from anything else I tell you Get a food, uh, get a notebook, and start doing what's called a food diary, where you write down everything you eat. Try to eat as simply as possible, and it would be nice if you could do the use the Swero V uh, from Longevity from Beyond Organics. If you could use it once, uh, perhaps maybe once a month or, or a couple of times a month, just use the Swero V all day. In any case, you want to keep track of foods and how those how you're responding to those foods. Right away, you're going to find some foods cause heartburn or cause a reflux. So those are going to be foods that need to be eliminated. We need data. That's the first step. Second step is start to patch up the gut. Get yourself on the nightly essence and do it today. I wouldn't wait one day, one more day, Gwendolyn. Get yourself on the nightly essence, three in the morning, three in the afternoon. Uh, or three in the evening, and you could also throw in three in the afternoon. Of course, the Healthy Star Pack, you're probably doing that. And if you're not, you should be. Uh, Sip on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. And then throw in some Fucoid Z, two in the morning, and uh, uh, three in the morning, and three at night. And again, you could throw in another three in the middle of the day if you so desire. Use the ultimate enzymes with all your meals. And then a little bit of apple cider vinegar wouldn't hurt you either. Try to grind up as much of your food as possible and make soups. Uh, veggie juice is wonderful. If you don't have a Vitamix, that would be a great thing for you to get. If you don't want to spend the money on a Vitamix, get a Nutribullet, which isn't quite as good, but it'll still do the job. You want to keep the fiber. The fiber is very, very important for the digestive system. And then 
uh, uh, the next, that's the digestive step. The next step is going to be blood sugar. You want to start to wean yourself off as best as you can. It's not easy. I know this. Personally, I know this, and I've seen it. Uh, people have difficulties with this. I, I realize it, but it's important to wean yourself off of bread, starches, cereals, uh, anything that breaks down quickly into sugar. You, veg, starchy vegetables, not as bad, but white potatoes, you know, not a great food. There's some nutritional benefit, but things that break down into sugar should be avoided, and the best way to get yourself off of sugar, and that includes, of course, sweets and desserts and soda pop and fruit juices, is to eat more protein, especially whey protein, but any protein, and then also you might want to use an amino acid called glutamine, G-L-U-T-A-M-I-N-E. You can get it as a powder, and a, a teaspoon or half a teaspoon a day or half a teaspoon twice a day can be great for sugar cravings. Also, interestingly, the glucogel caps can also be helpful for sugar cravings. Another benefit for the glucogel caps, glucosamine can be kind of sort of utilized like sugar, and that may help you as well. Of course, glucosamine will help you with your gut, and it'll help you with your joints, and it'll help you with a lot of keep wrinkles at bay, protect your blood vessels as well. So you got tons of stuff there, Gwendolyn, and I know I, I, I gave you, I, I don't, didn't mean to give you TMI, too much information, but I want you to see all of the tools that are available to you without the medical model from the comfort of your own living room. We could take our health back, and, and I know that's a lot of stuff, but that's a demonstration of how important or how easy it can be to, uh, to uh, take advantage of all of the uh, wonderful ways that we have to take to keep our bodies healthy. What, were you going to say something else, ma'am? I got a bunch of calls I want to get to. One quick question. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Sometimes when I take the, um, my, my um, Dr. Wallach's um, longevity powder, yeah. um, to put lemon in it just to help me drink it. Shouldn't Great. put lemon. Uh, you're talking about the Beyond Tangy? Beyond Tangy? Yeah. It yeah. sounds like you're doing too much, too big a dose. Uh, I would cut back on the dose, but lemon's great. If you can do it with lemon, that's great. Uh, personally, I don't. I I find a dose where I like the taste of it, and I stay at that dose, and then I just keep re-upping, keep refilling myself. But but lemon's still great. I love lemon. Lemon goes good with everything. All right, Gwendolyn. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. Thank Hope you. to meet bless you sometime. You. Okay, take care. Bye. bye bye. Susan in Arkansas, what's up? Welcome to the bright side. Susan. Oh, Susan. yes. Uh, hey, hi, Susan. Hi, Ben. Hey. I just got, and you're know, talking about Gwendolyn, I just got off of a eight-day lemon water fast. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Eight hey, days? So wonderful, huh? Eight days? You didn't eat for eight days? No. Oh, I love it, Susan. Hey, we got to take a break. I want to hear all about it when we come back, okay? okay? So hang tight. Hang tight. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're on hold, stay there. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll be back after this. side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's see. We're talking to Susan in Arkansas. Hey, Susan. So I want to hear about this. I'll get your question in a sec, but I want to hear real quickly about your uh, your lemon juice fast. Eight days, no food, right? No food, no. Nothing wow. solid. It was uh, organic lemons, the pure yeah. maple syrup, and the cayenne pepper. Now, this was in the 70s they had this, and yeah. somebody gave me the book, and then I did the salt flush with it, the two tablespoons of Himalayan salt and one quart of water. Wow. So you didn't so tell you. Really don't tell your doctor, man. He'll get all mad at you because you're supposed to go low salt. You're not supposed to have any salt. Everybody knows that. I'm just teasing. So what's your question, sweetheart? How, how okay, can we now help I you? Need it. Oh, I, I got a puzzle here. Um, okay. I went for a screening of uh, bilateral legs, and they diagnosed PVD, peripheral vascular disease. Got it. Okay. But they said it was the valves and not plaque. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's just a generic yeah. thing. The blood, yeah, your blood's not moving. Symptomatic. You know, it was like three months ago, asymptomatic, and then ten days ago. That's one of the reasons I got on the fast is because I I wanted to solve this without taking medication. Good for you. Anyway, you don't need medication. No, need medication. no, I haven't. No. I here, don't. Here, so peripheral artery. Nurse. Di per, your nurse? Did you say? Uh, retired. 
Oh, how, how and I, I don't like take their meds. I love it. I love it. I love, I love it. it. Well, thank you so much for being a nurse. First of all, I got to. Every time I hear somebody's a nurse, I got to thank you because well, nurse, thank you, for you know you. it's a, what you guys do for, for for humanity. The Florence Nightingale thing, man, it's amazing. Yes, I was what, a hospice nurse at the. Oh, end. God bless you. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. People, have, you know, unless people interact with the healthcare system, they have no idea how important nurses are. So, way more important than physicians, in my opinion. <laughs> Anyway, so here's well, the deal. Anyway, I was asymptomatic, and then about 10 days ago, I was getting um, extreme pain in my uh, popliteal back of the knee area. Okay. And I mean, like, on a scale of 1 to 10, about 10. It was horrible, and it was right. intermittent. But here's the deal, um, though. Let me tell you, tell you about asymptomatic here. How old are you? Or approximately how old? 50s, 60s I'm, kind of thing? No, I'm, I'm uh, 72. Okay, 72. Okay, so listen. Yeah, you're asymptom- not, you know, it's not exacerbated by water. But, but hang on. I hang on. Let me, get, let, me, let me tell you my point here, and I know, I know you're going to understand this. You're asymptomatic, and that means you don't have any symptoms. But if right. you're 72, how could you possibly not have some, some degree of sclerosis going on, of clogging oh, going on? Good. You have to. You have to. It's part of the way yeah. we live. So asymptomatic or not, you can assume that you're clogging up. All right? And that's basically what PVD is, peripheral vascular, some people say peripheral artery disease. What basically is happening is blood's not moving through. You're clogging up. And this happens because the lining of the blood vessels gets, gets coated with deposits from dirt in the blood. Remember, you probably heard me say this if you've listened to the program. All disease is cell disease, and all cell disease is dirty blood. Have you heard me say this? Mm-hmm. It's yeah. all dirty blood. And what happens when the blood gets dirty? Eventually, the pieces of dirt, and when I say dirt, I mean particles of food. I mean minerals like calcium and fats and uh, dead cells, immune cells, they start to accumulate on the surface of the, of, the, uh, uh, of the blood vessel. The lining of the blood vessel starts to get filled with dirt. Then an inflammatory process ensues. You get inflammation. You get the immune response. Basically, it's every single thing we're talking about in terms of disease and inflammation and clogging, except it's happening in the blood vessel itself. So what you got to do is, number one, you got to start to clean the blood, and that starts with digestive health. And you're on the right track with the fast, but do a food diary, eliminate problem foods. See, the reason I'm pointing this out is because it's counterintuitive. It doesn't really make sense. You're talking about peripheral artery disease, and I'm talking about your digestion. Unless you listen to the bright side, you think those are two separate things. But they're not. They're the same thing because the blood gets dirty from the digestive tract, from the intestine. So you've got to clean out the digestive system, food diary, all the things we just talked about with our, with our last caller, the Fucoid Z and probiotics and fermented foods, which I forgot to tell our last, li- our last caller, fermented foods and uh, increased uh, 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 provide a better environment for the bacteria in the gut with fiber and with apple cider vinegar, etc. Make sure you're keeping sugar out of the blood as best as possible. Blood sugar, accumulations of sugar in the blood will damage the blood vessels. That will create an inflammatory response. So you want to make sure that bread, pasta, sweet potatoes, potatoes, etc., anything that breaks down into sugar is kept down to a minimum. And then use your sweeties and your B vitamins and your omega and your uh, uh, beyond tangy tangerine. Anything you can, magnesium, alpha lipoic acid. By the way, do you know alpha lipoic acid is actually medicine for diabetics in Europe? Alpha lipoic acid, you have to go to the health food store to get that, around 400 milligrams a day. So again, that's the blood sugar component. Then there's the oxygen component. Hypoxia, low blood oxygen will clog the blood. Make sure you're just practicing nice, slow, deep breathing. And then, uh, and, and exercise too. You want to move your circulation. You want to get on a rebounder or hang upside down. Move the lymph. If the lymph is clogged, the blood vessels will become clogged. And then last but not least for atherosclerosis or PVD or Alzheimer's disease, I don't know if you heard me yesterday talking about how Alzheimer's disease is atherosclerosis of the brain and atherosclerosis is Alzheimer's of the brain, same thing. Another important strategy for Alzheimer's disease or PAD or PVD is chelation therapy. Have you heard of this, Susan? Yes, I have. Chelation. Get chelation. It's amazing for everybody. If I I was, if I was president, I would say chelation therapy for everybody. Forget Obamacare. Chelation for everybody. It's amazing. Uh, IV. 
IV is the best, but if you don't want to deal with it, then you can use chelating agents orally. But yes, IV is the best. We should all, it's expensive and it's a pain in the butt. You got to go to the doctor or naturopath to do it, but it's worth it. All right, Susan, I got to move on. Thank you so much for your call. Thank Appreciate you. it. And thank you for your work and, and your service and, and, and taking care of your health, too. That's so important. Sheila, Massachusetts, what's going on? Welcome to the bright side. Hi. Sheila. Hey, Sheila. Hi. Um, could you tell me um, how to treat a nodule on the thyroid? Okay. Nodules on the thyroid, a growth on the thyroid, is not a growth on the thyroid. It is, a, it is rapidly dividing thyroid cells. That's what we were talking about earlier, and we talk about a lot, is it's not a thyroid problem, it's a thyroid cell problem. Now, the okay. thyroid is always looking around for iodine, so the first thing to do is make sure you got enough iodine. If you don't have iodine, the thyroid will actually get bigger in order to scarf up more iodine, so make sure you're getting some iodine. And uh, okay. the best way to do that would be seaweed and fish and ocean products. Iodine's an ocean mineral. Seaweed is awesome. Sea vegetation. You can also use iodorol, uh, which is an iodine supplement, IOD. E -O I O D O R O L, I think it is. It's iodorol. You have to Google that. There might be an A in there somewhere. What about niacin or iodine? Well, let me. Yeah, that's good. Niacin iodide? Nascent iodine. Oh, nascent iodine? You know, I hear good things about it. I, I don't know enough about it to say, uh, but I do okay. hear good things about it. So you might want to try that. The next thing you yeah. want to do is make sure your thyroid's healthy. That's the iodine component, but it's much more than just iodine for the, th the thyroid. We have this crazy idea that if you have a thyroid problem, all you do is take iodine. Not true. Not true. And you can always tell a medical charlatan when they say that. Oh, you got an iodine, a thyroid problem? Take iodine. Iodine's important, yes. Nobody's dismissing iodine as, a, as an essential nutrient. It's important for a lot of things. But it, the thyroid is dependent on the adrenal glands, on female hormones, on digestive health. This is a very a, a little, a, a, unfortunately, not highly regarded connection to the thyroid. That's the, the microbiome, gut bacteria. Thyroid hormone is activated by gut bacteria. If you got a messed up gut, the wrong kind of gut bacteria, you're going to have a thyroid problem. So once again, yeah. So and, and then it's a circle because the thyroid regulates the gut. So the gut breaks down, then the thyroid gets weaker, and because the thyroid regulates the gut, and then the gut breaks down more, and then the thyroid gets weaker, and you get this downward spiral. So work on the digestive system, food diary, eliminate problem foods, probiotics, the nightly essence. You know, I, I don't want to, you, you know, you know what I'm going to say. I say it all the time. <laughs> work on the digestive system. Then you want to make sure that you're taking care of your oxygenation. When the sympathetic nervous system and the stress nervous system is activated long term, eventually the thyroid will slow down. I'll say that again, that's so important. When we're under long term stress, and that could be cancer, it could be a degenerative disease, or it could be emotional or mental stress, when we're